All right, guys, it is Wednesday and it is time for our weekly drop. And today we're going to get into falls, all right? And I want you to start thinking about the big picture of falls. So we're going to talk about first, what do you do when you have a resident that has a fall? And I know you're going to think like, oh, well, you know, residents does have a right to fall, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they do. But, you know, prevention is key for me. All right, so let's talk about when you have a fall, a couple things you want to think about. All right, and let's take it back to the admission process, all right? When you first get your resident, all right, you will be doing what they call a fall assessment. All right, so the, the resident comes into your facility, you do your admission assessment, you um, identify that this resident is at risk for a fall. And then what are you going to do with that information? All right, okay, that information you're going to then put on the care plan. Okay, you might be thinking, well, what type of in information? What are you going to do to keep your residents safe? And I think a lot of times some of this information gets missed in our admission process because we don't ask questions, okay? So perhaps um, you identify that, okay, yes, my resident is at risk for falls and they have fallen in, you know, the last 30 days or the last week, okay? They had a fracture. So what are some of the things that you're going to be looking at when it comes to um, your fall assessment? Are there meds, their incontinent issues, um, their transfer status, their ambulation status? All right, cognition, key. All right, a lot of times we miss this. And I want you to um, really tone into this because sometimes we think that just because a patient isn't alert and oriented times three or might not have the bends of at least the 13 or 15. We, we think that, oh, well, this person can't really give us any in, um, information to help um, help them not fall, right? Help them prevent falls. So pay attention to their cognition, their eyesight, pain, all right? But when you're doing that admission assessment, one of the um, things that I haven't noticed, and this is some of the things that you might not know or something that you might have to start asking yourself is, what <clears throat> did the resident do at home? Right? What did the resident do at home um, that can help you get an idea on how to properly provide interventions that are um, effective specifically for your resident. For example, I always say that my father, and I'm going to use him, use him as an example. I always say, oh my goodness, y'all, please don't let me have to have this man going to a nursing home. Okay, he's not. But he would be like one of those patients that I can just see them calling me in the middle of the night saying, oh my goodness, your father keeps waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Your father doesn't go to bed till late. You know, and, I'm, and you know, I have to start telling them, okay, well... Give them a, a big picture of what my father's life looked like prior to him coming here, all right? And those are the things I want you to start asking your um, your residents when they come into your facility, especially when they have family um, that are with them. Ask questions, okay? What was his routine like, his or her routine like? What did they do for a living? Um, what did they do for activities? Because then you want to get that, that um, care plan as personalized as possible for it to meet the, the needs of that specific resident okay so now you get that information and you know that you want to put that information and you'll say all right um my use example for my father okay he gets that in the middle any time between four or five in the morning why because he prays at that time so you find in that oh my goodness every time i turn around mr ali he's always falling between the hours of four and let's say six Okay, and then I, you, you'll call me and I'll say, oh, okay, yeah, that's his prayer time. So then you want to put an intervention in place to maybe perhaps, hey, at this time, go and wake up Mr. Ali so we can get him ready to set up for his prayer. All right, so it's, it's finding information that's personalized for the resident in order to prevent the resident from falling. Now, it's not to say that Mr. Ali isn't going to fall, okay? It's just um, a matter of fact of saying, hey, we know that this is his routine that was at home and we're going to try to keep it as routine as possible all right in order to keep him safe okay so you put that intervention in place 
And then guess what? I get the call and it's, oh, Mr. Ali still had a damn fall. Okay, what are we going to do now? All right. Okay, you put the care plan in place. <clears throat> now you're going to make sure you have root cause for the fall. Okay. All right, just say you get another patient and you might say, oh, resident was ambulating and slipped in water going to the bathroom. Okay, what's the root cause for the fall? All right, the root cause would be resident slipped, right? Slipped in some water. Okay, but what call, how did the water get to the, fall, to the floor? All right, you find that, oh, he tipped over his cup of um, coffee and didn't have a lid on it. Okay, so the spill, right, didn't have a lid causes the water to, um, to get on the floor. I walk, I slip, okay? So then you want to not only just, oh, you were just gonna wipe up the water so the resident didn't fall, no, we want to look at the cup, all right? So we wanna make sure, we wanna ensure that, hey, encourage residents to have lids on liquid beverages to prevent spilling to, to then decrease the risk of falls. So you wanna look at the big picture and you wanna make sure that your root cause, um, you have your root cause, but your intervention, okay? Your intervention needs to match the root cause. All right, and again, it's not to say that, oh, this resident might not ever fall again, but it's to say the root cause matches the intervention or the intervention matches the root cause they marry to each other. All right, it makes sense. And there are going to be times when you're gonna get a fall and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I've tried everything and this person still falls. All right, and that's going to happen, so don't beat yourself up about it, but just start looking at the big picture and making sure that they match each other, okay? The other thing we wanna start thinking, all right? We want witness statements, all right? How many times you get a witness statement and it says, oh, I was on break, you know, I didn't see him fall or whatever, and it's not to say, oh, um, you know, or this patient might not have been of my assignment, however, there are still people who would have seen this resident. Okay, get those statements. What was the resident doing the last time that you saw the resident? That's what we want, okay? Because again, that's going to provide um, data for them to make sure that we're looking at Mr. So-and-so as a whole, okay? So we want witness statements. And don't leave out the resident witness statement, all right? Just because you might have a resident and, um, you know, like I said, they might not be alert and oriented times three or four, but they still can answer questions, okay? Narrow down the questions so they're simplified for the resident to answer so that then the resident can even give you information on what he or she was trying to do. So never leave that resident out, okay? So you gather those informations and then you put the intervention um, on the care plan. <clears throat> this is where a lot of people <clears throat> miss, all right? We don't do education for the resident, resident representative, staff, okay? Nobody, all right, we do all this hard work here and then nobody knows about this information here, all right, to say, okay, hey guys, we have a new intervention put in place for Mr. So-and-so so that hopefully we can um, prevent the fall, another fall, or decrease the amount of times his fall, he falls. Okay, this step is missed so many times. The next shift will come on, and guess what? He's on the floor again. All right, why? Because we didn't follow through. All right, we put an intervention on the care plan, but guess what? Nobody was updated on the care plan, and then Mr. So-and-so um, had another fall, okay? And yes, I know you're gonna say, oh, well, the CNAs are supposed to look at the care plan before they start. Yeah, th th yeah, that's true. But when they don't, we still have to make sure that we give them verbal. So when they're coming in onto that next shift, hey, hey guys, come here, let's do a little huddle. Mr. So-and-so had a fall for today, and this is an intervention that we um, put in place for him. Please make sure each time you're going in that you make sure that these things are in place for that resident. All right, then we're closing that loop. All right, so then 
the next day you come in or you know you're looking at as a DON, you're gathering or your unit manager whoever handles that you're going to be looking at the incident report all right making sure it's completed with MDRR notification if it needed any type of skin assessment you know, pains addressed. You got therapy involved. You got your witness statements. All right, you wanna make sure you have all this thing, all these things in place. All right, you got your new fall assessment in there. All right, then you wanna be doing your IDT note, okay? As a DON, you're gonna be saying, okay, resident so-and-so had a fall. Um, you know, whatever the root cause was to the fall, the intervention that was put in place for the fall, resident did not sustain any injuries, a new intervention put in place that have educated resident and resident representative aware of the intervention and agrees to the intervention, um, and it's updated on the care plan. Okay, so now you have all of that, and your, your, um, Incident report is complete, right? You did your IDT note and make sure you have, you know, like I said, therapy. We always do a therapy screen, all right? Then you're going to follow this resident, all right? Now you have your weekly fall meeting, all right? So John, all right, he had a fall. You want to be reviewing this fall, all right? Reviewing everything, making sure everybody's still on the same page for the resident with the fall. And this is another thing that gets missed. So-and-so had a fall. Okay, we put an intervention in place. And guess what? We don't look at it no more. We don't look at it no more until his ass had another fall. Okay? No, you want to look at this for at least four weeks. Look at this resident for at least four weeks to make sure the intervention that you put in place, okay, it was a spill with a cup that you're doing those pop-ups and saying, oh, okay, you know, resident does have a cup, um, a lid on the cup. And remember, the lid on the cup isn't nursing. The lid on the cup is going to come from dietary when they're bringing up those trays, all right? So that's that IDT team meeting that I'm telling you about. So now you're going to be following John for four weeks, all right? Four weeks go, you're meeting each week. You're doing another, another note. Resident had had no further falls at this time. Intervention was effective that we put in place. You know, <clears throat> we'll continue on monitoring weekly, okay? Then you're going to be, every, every week you're doing that. Okay, and then once those four weeks are off, then you you can close it out. All right, but monitor him and monitor those interventions for at least four weeks. And then the other thing you might say, oh, um, Bill Keith, you know, what type of meeting, you know, when you're having the fall meetings, what, what all does that entail, all right? Always have a goal for your meetings, okay? All right, you want to have, what goal do you want to have for these fall meetings? Or any type of risk meeting that you have, you want to make sure you have a goal. What is the purpose for you having these meetings? Don't just say we're having a meeting just to have a meeting. Just to say, to mark it off a list, yeah, we had the fall meeting, but it, it didn't address anything. You didn't ask important questions. You didn't get any feedback. Okay, so have meetings with a purpose. And um, I created this one tool that I have here. Okay, this is, it's a little faded, okay, I, I ran out of ink. <laughs> but, okay, it's, <clears throat> my, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the root cause, okay, what is the root cause? All right, provide fee feedback, okay, what's the solution? It's interactive, these meetings need to be interactive, you revisit, okay, so these are your revisits, you're revisiting this resident for at least four weeks, okay, to say, okay, this intervention was truly 100% effective. And I only want to say 100%, okay, because again, it can happen again, but you want to make sure that you're still monitoring that, all right? So don't put the intervention in place and then boom, let it go, all right? Put the intervention in place, follow up with it, hashtag, but did you follow through to ensure that everybody is doing what they need to do to keep John off the floor, okay? And if you um, are having problems with your um, resident, I mean, your CNAs, nurses <clears throat> completing incident reports i always have like the clock is ticking okay how to complete um, um an incident report in an hour okay and literally literally every five minutes you go date and time of location you get your vital signs your neural checks you're assessing for range of motion pain 
if you have any type of injury. Review the BIMS and resident statement, staff statements, looking at your medications, your transfer status, ambulation status. Um, root cause, again, must match the intervention. So this is a tool that I put together on um, the clock is ticking, all right? That means like, listen, we don't have all day to find out what's going on with John. We need to get this done now, all right? So stopping and everybody, stop what you're doing, find out what's going on with John, why did he fall? What are we gonna to do to prevent John from falling again? All right, root cause much match. They gotta marry each other, okay? And then updating the care plan, staff education. All right, so that's my weekly drop for um, today. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any um, topics that you would like me to discuss so I can meet your needs, don't hesitate to um, ask, okay? Until next week, guys, have a great day.